welcome into courtside chats with AJ McCord ahead of game two of this Western Conference Finals between your Portland Trail Blazers and the Golden State Warriors. The Blazers pretty much ready to turn the page from game one. It was not their best performance. In fact, far from it. But they believe they have so much more to give. And so that's what they're looking to do tonight against the Warriors in game two as they look to even the series and steal one here in Oakland. And we lost one game. I mean, it's game one of a series. They got to win four games. It's the first to four, not the first to one. So uh, we got to tighten up and ob obviously execute a little bit better. Um, you know, play play three three better quarters going into the fourth, and then tighten up in the fourth quarter on Thursday. We're not going to start game two down by 20. So um, obviously, you don't ever want to have that type of game. Uh, but I mean, they the the object. You know, what you want to do is take care of home court. They won the first one. You know, we came here to at least get one, and we still got an opportunity to do that. Um, but we got to be much better to get that done. So, you know, we still got that opportunity, and uh, that's what we're going to try to go out there and do. We didn't get a lot of time to prepare, you know, for game one. And uh, now that we've been through it, we know what to expect. We know what the atmosphere is like. Um, you know, we know the plays. You know, it's, it's, as the series goes on, we'll know more and more, and we'll get more acclimated into this boy down to basketball. We are back. We I don't know back. about you, but I can hardly hear anything. It's very loud and it's very cold in here. Those are the themes of Oracle yeah. so far tonight. Yeah. When we first got here, what was like an hour and a half ago, yeah. they were playing a song for um, like the, you know the ushers do a dance. You oh, know, yeah. like that's always cute yeah. and fun. It was so loud. I was standing next to a guy, a local reporter, and he's like, "This is the this is the loudest thing I've ever heard." I was like, "It's the loudest thing." Oh, and we could barely hear it. We were mouthing it to yeah. each other. And then I just took off my jacket for the first time. I did my entire face for so class nice you. <laughs> with a jacket. Finally, as people are starting to like file in I think it's getting a little bit warmer I think so. but you and I talked about this is about the coldest arena I can yeah. remember being in for a long time yeah so and Brooke would know right so this is Brooke Olsen Dan in case Hi. you've been living under a rock and don't know who she is but she's been in plenty of arenas with the Blazers this season and this postseason yes so Brooke we have a lot to digest from game one or maybe a lot to move on from in game one so for the Blazers what is priority number one tonight I think you digest and then you move on okay. I think it's a little bit of both uh, I'm gonna give you two I guess kind of in my opinion and it was the theme of it with everybody I talked to yeah. on Facebook live also obviously turnovers yeah. were an issue uh, you, you could say maybe it was a little bit of jitters game yeah. one Western Conference Finals it's exciting that could be part of it but they did a lot of things that were abnormal for them yes. and Dame would be the first to say he's like that's not us and they, right. they've been taking very good care of the ball in the postseason especially against Denver so I think that is neck and neck with Defending the pick and roll. Yes. Obviously. <laughs> I asked Coach about it. Uh, he talked about it, you know, after the game, and he did say something to the point of it's not as bad as everybody saw. They didn't right. get a ton. You know, it is Steph Curry. He's going to, you yeah. know, he shoots the three a little, he shoots the three pretty well. But it's still definitely okay. something he wants to improve in. Right. And they have a game plan going forward tonight. Uh, he said you'll see, you'll see a different defensive scheme than what you saw in game one. So, yes, it was a problem, and they are going to make adjustments, which we will see tonight. Perfect, which is all you can ask That's for can of ask the head for. coach, right? Yeah. And so the other thing to remember is that Portland has been in this position before. Zach Collins was the first one to make the comparison to game five against the Nuggets. They got blown out of the water in the Mile High City and then came back and won two must-win games to yeah. punch their ticket here to the Western Conference Finals. So knowing that they've already done that once this postseason, how much confidence does that give you that they can make those adjustments tonight? Yeah, and I would even venture to say, like, the final score wasn't exactly accurate to the game itself. Right. Like, yes, that was a blowout against Denver. But, I mean, was it six points? going Excellent. into the fourth quarter yeah. so yes it is encouraging because they did bounce back so well and wins two straight but I would say that there were a lot of things that they took from game one here at Oracle that yes they can do better but it was still encouraging that they were in the ball game going into the fourth quarter so yes to, to answer your question we have seen them regroup and come back uh, a tighter team not, not tighter in a negative way more focused team I guess yes. I would say uh, cleaning they clean things up yep that would be something I would say with more focus and so I I am I am encouraged by the way that they, the things I had to say yesterday yes. also, that tonight will be uh, a, an improved Blazers team and some specific things defensively we'll see. And I think they'll look to free up Dame and CJ a lot tonight yeah. too. So speaking of Dame, obviously we're back in his hometown. This is far from the first time he's played back in Oakland since joining the Blazers. But I did get a lot of questions about what the reception was yeah. to Dame. And so I was actually pretty surprised. I haven't covered a, a game mm -hmm. here at Oracle before before Tuesday, whatever day that was. <laughs> and um, I was pretty surprised at how receptive everyone oh. was to Dame. I mean, they were cheering for him and all that. So is that pretty typical of the Oracle reception? Always. Uh, he is Oakland's son, truly. Yeah. Like, honestly, uh, he, I, 
whenever I talked to, so last year when we, or two years ago, when I was doing a feature, and gotcha. it was, I went around at Oracle in the postseason, I said, I asked them like their prediction, and they said, well, listen, the Warriors are going to win in four or five or whatever, but <laughs> we always want Dame to play well. Like, that is the, uh. ev that's what everybody says. He's like, the Warriors through and through, we want the Warriors to win, but we like it when Dame plays well and the Warriors win. It's one of those things. He <laughs> is beloved here. I, I, I told this story on Facebook Live, um, I think last game, it was the morning of game one, and I was walking out of our hotel, and they were in the lobby, not lobby, but in the, the restaurant is on the ground floor, so you can gotcha. look inside and see, like through the window, you can see them eating lunch. Yeah. So I looked, I saw JT, who's head of our PR, I waved to him, then I saw a couple players, but I was on my way to get my own lunch, so I didn't really, and I see these guys all the time, I don't need to look in, but it was hilarious, there's this guy on his phone, and he was walking down the street, and he's like, yeah, babe, I'll see you in a little, <gasps> Oh my gosh, babe, I'm watching Damien Lillard eat a sandwich. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm watching Damien, oh, it might be a burger, I don't know. I'm watching Damien Lillard, oh my gosh, babe, oh my gosh, babe. And he like make, kept like making excuses like yeah. to walk around and like look like he was like, he was so excited that he just like randomly came across Damien Lillard eating lunch yeah. and he could see through the window and he, his girlfriend heard all about it. It was so funny. So yes, he is beloved here and I love that because that just says something about the person that Dame is. Yes. You know, they, they want him to do well. And you know he grew up a he grew up a Warriors fan, so it's yeah. it's just it's a special relationship, and I love that they show him love because he deserves it. And I mean he showed up to Game One in an in an A's jersey, so he still loves this area. That was cold. That was that was pretty <laughs> awesome. And Steve Kerr even said, you know, he's a great ambassador for the city, but obviously we like it a lot more when he's not playing us. Of course, and of so course. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Now. E.T., I think, had maybe the quote after. He always does, actually. He's, Evan Turner is always a great quote. He's a quote. walking quote. He is. So this was the one he told Jason Quick of The Athletic. He said, we let them double team our stars, and we let their stars go ollie ollie oxen free. <laughs> so, a.k.a. C.J. and Dame were suffocated in game one. Clay and Steph, not so much. So here is uh, the team talking about how they'd like to let Dame go ollie ollie oxen free tonight. <laughs> We got to make them pay. You know, if they if they send a couple guys at them, we got to play four on three, or, or you know, or whether it be two on one on the weak side. We just got to find opportunities to to, to make them, make them pay for over helping. They kind of over exaggerate, you know, how they they blitz him and they put two or three guys on the ball. You know, uh, everybody else just got to be ready to make plays, and, and we've done it all year. You know, um, you know, game one didn't show up, but we just got to continue to do that. Um, you know, for the rest of the series. Just over my career, I've. I've always had big scoring games against Golden State, and um, obviously this is to go to the finals, so they're not going to come out and allow me to see what I've always seen from them. This is the first time they've defended me with, I mean, one time I had the ball on the wing and I had, I had a live dribble. I hadn't even dribbled the ball, and they just ran another guy at me and double-teamed me before I dribbled, and um, it worked out for them in that game, so why would they go away from me? So we, it's just something that we got to solve, but um, obviously it's completely different coverage than what I've seen over the course of my career from them. So certainly getting Dame a little bit more free is going to be a huge yeah. priority. He only had 12 shot attempts in game one, which is so low for him. The lowest this postseason, he averages closer to 21, 22. So knowing that, how does Dame get a little more free tonight? Well, they mentioned I had Myers on the show. He said, we have got to do a better job of getting him open, it's setting screens. It all yeah. starts with setting screens. So that is definitely, we talked about turnovers, we talked about defense. I would say that is third on the list. So making yeah. sure, and none of these are in order. I should say they're just all even, all three. They're all important. It's getting him better looks. And, and I would say CJ for that matter too. Yeah. Because as you mentioned, I've been talking about Ollie Ollie Oxen free and all that, <laughs> which is my favorite thing ever. Because my dad says that all the time. I like, know, I thought of my, my, my dad just like instantly. I was like, Ollie Ollie Oxen free. I feel like that's something my dad says. <laughs> I haven't heard it for a long time, but I really love that Evan Turner's bringing it back. I'll yeah. say that. But yes, getting Dame better looks, freeing him up. It's going to be huge tonight, right. and this guy, we rarely see him have back-to-back -back games in which he's not allowed to get the looks he wants. Yeah. He's not going to handle it. He's not going to take it. So I think tonight is a big night for Dame, and he's just going to go Ollie Ollie Oxenfree. I just want to say it one more time. Yeah, Ollie Ollie Oxenfree. How many more times can we squeeze that into Five this three least. minutes? Okay, so um, Ollie Ollie Oxenfree, also the turnovers, right? Those He had seven. Dame had seven in game yeah. one, which is one shy of his career high, which was eight against the Pelicans last year. Oh, sorry, AJ. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm just saying <laughs> that was the career high, so we're not there yet. But he blamed a lot of that on the Warriors and their active hands. A lot of those were tips of him trying yeah. to get the pass out. So how does he get the pass out sooner to avoid some of those turnovers? Well, I agree with that, and I you know I was reading about that a lot today. I think that he's very accurate with that, but I also think 
Dame, God love him, he he wants to win so badly yeah. that at times he tries to do too much, I think, when he when he is being defended at such a high level. I'm not saying force, but, you know, he's driving in, and then he does. He's, he turns around to find somebody, and yeah. he's got four people on him, and he doesn't have time to find right. the, anyone. Yep. So I think that it's going to be a lot of communication, I think. There, Coach Schatz is very good, especially out of timeouts, of running things specifically for guys. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of things or plays run for Dame to get him open, and that, of course, that a lot of that falls on his teammates to yep. make sure that they're helping him get open. So I think Stotts is, Coach Stotts does a great job of knowing when somebody needs to get going and see their shot go and then get into a rhythm. Yep. Dame is one of those guys, so I think we might see a lot for him tonight. Yeah, that's what the team echoed a lot yesterday at practice was that we have to make them pay for how they're over-exaggerating and guarding Damian Lillard. So the last thing I want to ask you, we know this team plays a little bit better when they are mad. So against Oklahoma City, they didn't like anything about the Thunder. Against the Nuggets, they really ratcheted it up after game five when the Nuggets did a little bit of showboating. Now, yeah. you cannot wait for the Warriors to make you mad if you are the Blazers <laughs> and expect to win the series. So how does this team, who has been through so much, draw on some other emotion or create an emotion to fire them up for this series. What if I just make up something like that they said that they did oh, really say and then just start spreading news. it? That fake news? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is. I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Uh, I'll make something up. No, I agree, I agree with you. And, and this team, yes, they, they, they do well when they're, like you mentioned, angry, when they're mad, when the other team is feisty and disrespects them. I think that is something that really gets them going. But I also think that they're self-starters as well. Yeah. And yep. if there isn't something like that, I mean, they still want to come out and win. I think that the thing that's most inspiring for them or what's going to get them going is that they are they they, they weren't happy with the way they right. played in game right. one. And this is a team that has a lot of pride. And so I think that that is the number one word I would use, and Dame throws it around a lot too, is we, want, we have to have pride in, in yep. ourselves as a team. And I think that we'll see that tonight, a bounce back. They, they know they didn't play a good game. That was yeah. like kind of the, the gist of it. I mean, yeah. there were a number of things they could do differently, but overall, Dame said, we just didn't play a very good basketball yeah. game. They don't want to do that again. So I think pride will be the driving force tonight. Yeah, and even the fact that they love being the underdog. Always. Right? I, I mean, Zach Collins is like, that is my favorite role, and they very much are. And I think a lot of people, at least listening to Bay Area Sports, a lot of people are saying it's over. Warriors have swept them, count it done, don't even show up for three and four. If that's not enough to get you going. I, w I was in the bathroom before the show started. You know they have the radio going yeah. on in the bathrooms. I was so mad. I was listening <laughs> to it. The guy was like, but maybe five, maybe five, but I'm thinking four. And I was, I was just. We need was, to have that on repeat I know, in I the know. Blazers locker room. <laughs> I guess I don't need to make a, I don't need to make something nope. up. I could go tell them that. But yes, I think that I'm looking forward to tonight. Yeah. I, I definitely think we'll see a lot of adjustments. This team wants to head home one and one. And how fantastic yeah. would that be? Yeah, that would be a huge win for the Blazers. So Brooke. Thank you for joining us. Now, Always. of course, the Warriors had availability yesterday. Here's what Steve Kerr said about Golden State's defensive strategy against CJ and Dane. We've always had a, a good defensive team here with a lot of uh, a lot of smart, long defenders. You know, guys like Andre and Draymond, Sean, Clay. They, they play the passing lanes, um, and uh, and they help each other. They've got a good feel for for uh, the team defense and where the five guys are and so I thought last night it was a very good uh, defensive effort we so, still saw plenty of things on film that we could improve upon but it was a uh, good defensive game for us yeah. all right we are back courtside and live with Jason Dumas our friend from Cron down here in the Bay Area so Jason, um, obviously a lot's been made of the fact that Kevin Durant is not playing right, right. now first off give us an update of his status well Steve Kerr was very pessimistic yesterday when he gave us an update. They haven't released the update today yet, but from the way it sounds, he's going to be on the court, not going to be on the court sooner rather than later. Gotcha. A lot of people are saying it might actually be a couple weeks. So we just don't know right now the severity of that sprain, but we do know he hasn't been back on the court since yeah. the injury. And DeMarcus Cousins, who got injured weeks before that, is already back on the court right. playing, practicing, you know. But Kevin Durant, he hasn't even got back to basketball activities yet. Okay, so that's a very important update for Blazers fans. But also the Warriors seem to be just fine right. without Kevin Durant. In fact, I think they're 27-1 yep. without KD. And so how does this offense,
offense still work and function? It seemed like on Monday or Tuesday, game one, sorry, getting my yeah. face confused. It seemed like, um, I mean, Steph Curry turned a little bit of vintage Steph Curry. Is right. that really what happens when Kevin Durant isn't playing? Well, one thing that they have going for them is the confidence that they've won a championship without Kevin Durant. Right. Now, don't make no mistake about it. I'm not saying they're better off without Kevin Durant. Of course they're not. When you have a guy like him, you always want him in the lineup. But they've won a championship with a core of Steph, Clay, Andre Iguodala, and Draymond Green. So just knowing that gives you a confidence boost. And I also think that when they have Kevin Durant on the court, just subconsciously some players get a little lazy because okay. they know it's not like a conscious effort, like we don't have to work as hard. But when you know you have a guy like Kevin Durant who can bail you out whenever, who can put the ball on the floor and score, you just kind of take your foot off the gas a little bit. So when he leaves the lineup, they're kind of on notice, like, all right, we have to ramp it up. Right. So the other thing Rip City has been a little irritated with was the Blazers pick and roll coverage of right. Clay and Steph on Tuesday. So obviously uh, that's something that's going to change for the Blazers tonight. I'm guessing Steve Kerr is anticipating that. Right. So at shoot around yesterday, what did he say about their strategy coming into game two? Well, it's funny because they asked Steve Kerr about how Portland dropped their bigs on pick and rolls. And he said, we get that a lot, actually. It wasn't that strange. Teams switch it up with us. Obviously, last round, Houston was very aggressive. They were hedging the picks, and they were being aggressive with Clay and Steph. But Steve basically said, there's nothing we haven't seen before, and that wasn't that surprising. And sometimes it works, because they do like to uh, pass it into the lane off those picks and get it to Draymond and get it to Iggy. Uh, but Portland, they cut off those lanes when they dropped the bigs, and Steph and Clay, they were just on. They, they weren't missing. So it backfired on them, but it wasn't something that surprised Steve Kerr. Okay, so that's good to know. I am expecting a little bit different defensive strategy from the Blazers tonight because right. they did not like seeing Steph and Clay drain that many threes over their heads. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, you know, I was on Twitter, and everybody, I have a lot of Blazers fans on Twitter, and they were, they were driving themselves crazy. Yeah. And... There was a graphic that Steph got seven open three-pointers. That's the most in his career. Okay. He's never had that many open looks. And, you know, a guy who shoots so well, you got to try to get a hand in his yeah. face. Or, you know, they can kill you slowly that way. Or, or quickly. Or, or quickly. Exactly. <laughs> thank you so much for Yes, thank you for us. having me. Of course. Now, of course, one thing we talked about, too, was the Blazers were less than 48 hours removed from that game against the Nuggets. That Game 7 emotional series win. So the Blazers talking yesterday about how excited they were simply to have a day to prep for Golden State. It's huge. You know, um, we, we didn't get a lot of time to prepare, you know, for game one. And uh, now that we've been through it, we know what to expect. We know what the atmosphere is like. Um, you know, we know the plays. You know, it's, it's, as the series goes on, we'll know more and more, and we'll get more acclimated into this boy down to basketball. But I think a lot of it's mental, you know, because especially against a team like the Warriors who take advantage of every little mistake you make and every lapse you have defensively, they're going to they're gonna make you pay for it. So we got to just be locked in and stay focused for a full game. I think the film showed us a lot of ways that we can make it easier on ourselves. So uh, we're looking forward to, to game two with that. All right, so we are just about 45 minutes away from tip-off here at Oracle Arena of Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals. We broke down a lot for you in this courtside chat. Expect different defensive strategy from Terry Stotts on Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. Also, expect the Blazers to come in with a different offensive strategy for Damian Lillard to get him going. 12 shot attempts is not enough for the Blazers' star, especially Oakland's own Damian Lillard. So watch for those two things and, of course, those turnovers, which when we talk about the two first things. I think the turnovers had a lot to do with that as well. So a great game too for you. And don't forget after the game, about an hour or so, stay tuned to my Twitter for an exact time. We're going to have a post game chat after I head into the locker room and get reaction from the team and the Blazers looking to tie this series up, bring a split back to Portland for games three and four. But for now, live from Oracle, thank you so much for joining us for Courtside Chats.